Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today we're checking out a series of microphones from Vanguard Audio Labs. We're gonna be talking about what makes these microphones really unique in the market, and also doing some audio tests. Let's check it out. So today we're checking out the V1 kit with the Lolly large diaphragm capsules and also the V44S. The V1 stereo kit with the Lolly, that's really a versatile kit. It comes with four small diaphragms, each with their own polar pattern. So you have four different flavors of a pencil condenser, really. Then on that same V1 body, you can actually convert it to a large diaphragm using the Lolly capsules. And those offer two polar patterns, cardioid and omnidirectional. Now, polar patterns aren't necessarily just about the directional pickup pattern of a mic. It also affects the flavor and the natural EQ of the mic. And so when you look at the V1 and its four capsules, you get the cardioid, hypercardioid, wide cardioid, and omni. Those are different pickup patterns, but they're also different flavors and different tones. So right there you have six sounds and it comes as a stereo pair. So if you're recording a singer-songwriter, you can set up a pencil condenser and a large diaphragm for vocals. Or if you're doing drum overheads, you can go for two of the pencil condensers by choosing cardioid polar pattern of the small diaphragm caps. So depending on what you need, you can go two large diaphragms, two pencils, or mix and match. Now one really cool thing about the V1 is the shock mount. And I know it seems something so simple, but a lot of times this is overlooked, especially with boutique companies. Sometimes it's just kind of an afterthought or a third party, something that is just thrown in the box perhaps, but you can tell they've really spent a lot of time money and effort to make sure this was nice. And they even encourage you to use it on other mics in your studio, giving exact dimensions on what mics should fit. And this Vanguard mentality of playing nice with other gear extends into the capsules. Uh, on the website, they actually give the threads and suggest that you can take other pencil condensers from other manufacturers and convert those from a small diaphragm into a large diaphragm using the Lolly capsule. So it's a really cool mentality to have where Vanguard is working itself into the entire ecosystem of the studio where you're able to augment gear that you already have with a really nice shock mount or a different set of capsules. Next up is the V44S. This is a dual capsule large diaphragm condenser and it's twistable on the top. So it has detented uh, positions every 15 degrees and it goes up to 90 degrees. So just with this range of control, you can do various different stereo configurations. Each of these capsules is individually controlled. You can go from cardioid to figure eight to omni independently. This means that with a 90 degrees uh, range of motion, you can do XY with two cardioids, or you can do bloom line with two figure eights. Now, both signals from each of the capsules go down a single wire, it's a five pin XLR, down to a splitter box. And this splitter box takes the five pin XLR and gives you two three pin XLR, which is basically the two microphones on top of the V44S. Now what's cool about this splitter box is that if you wanted to record something in mid side and have one capsule be cardioid and the other capsule looking to the sides in figure eight, then this splitter box gives you a transformer isolated second output that is polarity reversed. So you actually have in real time the decoding of a mid side signal. This is great for live monitoring of drum overheads. Usually to do MS, you have to record two channels and then later you copy the side, you flip the polarity and you hard pan the sides and there you go. There's your stereo image. But here we can actually get it in real time, which is great. Again, this Vanguard mentality of working with other gear in the studio, super cool. And they've even suggested, well, you can use other microphones. And so they've added not only the five pin XLR, but two three pin XLRs for use with other microphones. Really cool. So you could take anything that's a figure eight, a cardioid and get this feature, get real time mid side. 
Uh, just like the V1, the V44S has a really nice shock mount. This is, again, one of the nicer shock mounts that I have in the studio here. And they've suggested that, hey, it might fit other mics that you already have in the studio that may not have as nice of a shock mount. You can use ours. Okay, so let's have some audio test. We're gonna fire it up with uh, some singer-songwriters. I'm gonna use the V1 with the cardioid small diaphragm capsule. And then for vocal, I'll use the V1 body with the lolly capsule and cardioid. Honestly, I hate myself and the devil poured me another drink. Just trying your sorrows at the bottom of a bottle. Just take a sip and don't think. And I said, I reckon that here must be empty. It seems the devil lives right here. Got no soul to sell, just a bottle of whiskey It's another day in Haywood County Now on this next example, I want to uh, play a performance by my friend Bridget But about halfway through, I want to apply some compression And I really think this helps to help me judge uh, different sounds of a mic. It just helps to kind of put it into a context. There's no EQ here. I'm just simply going to uh, play it through an Audioscape 76A, and I'm going to have it on the 4 plus 8 ratio, which is kind of like an all buttons in mode, but just the 4 plus 8. And it's kind of an interesting choice for vocal, but it works out really well. So again, first it'll be raw, and then with some compression. my vision skewed from looking too damn long at the same things So I'm moving on, I sang this song Only a thousand times before Where the road she calls, I hear that song She's the only place I've ever called home Kiss again, no zip code, got no guilty load, got my soul right, now I'm traveling light. Only friends that I need are the ones that believe their life. Is in the living? You know, it's a great sound. And I'm very impressed by the small diaphragm. I mean, I think this is the first position that I tried and I was like, wow, that's that's great. You know, don't move it. <laughs> that sounds good. And to speak to the balance of these mics, let's try it on drum overhead. So first up, we're gonna do the V1 with all of the four small diaphragm caps. Uh, it'll be the cardioid, the hypercardioid, the wide cardioid, and the omnidirectional. These are almost ribbon-like. I mean, I really, really like the sound of these mics. They're just a very well-balanced sound. So moving on to the lolly on top of the V1 body. First the cardioid, and then switched to omni. Okay, so the Lolly uh, large diaphragm cap, it does sound different, it sounds more colored. And of course, that's what we would expect from a large diaphragm. So before moving on, I wanna do a comparison of 
the V1 body with the small diaphragm cardioid capsule and the V1 body with the Lawley capsule in cardioid. So small versus large. So moving on to the V44S, we're gonna go back to the overhead demo and we'll check that mic out. We're gonna twist the capsule to be 90 degrees apart and we're gonna check out a few different polar patterns. They will both be the same polar pattern in each example. So uh, first up will be uh, both to figure eight. That'll give us the bloom line uh, configuration. Then it'll be both to cardioid. That'll give us XY. And then we'll have both to omnidirectional. That's kind of a weird one, but we'll try it out anyhow. Okay, so it's really interesting to see how uh, even though the microphone has the same angle of 90 degrees, the figure eight and the cardioid, it has a noticeably different wideness to the stereo image. Really cool. I'm really used to using ribbons in a bloom line, and this was a first for me to actually hear it in a large diaphragm format. So between figure eight and cardioid, you have a lot of cool options. And the Omni, you know, it's kind of weird. It is very mono sounding, but it's actually not completely mono. This might actually be a good option if you wanted to record multiple sources in a mono-like configuration in Omni, but have a lot of those sources on access. Because we have two different mics expanding the on access area for tracking different sources. So speaking of this Omni, it really actually has a trick for vocal recording. And so I set the V44S up with my friend Justin and we tried some vocal takes. So first up, I'm gonna do just the top capsule in cardioid. We're just gonna hear what the mic sounds like in a more conventional way. Well, I pack up and leave this town tonight. Then maybe I'll stand a chance to win this fight. The fight I have to win inside my head. As I lie awake at night in my bed These nights are getting easier to sleep alone Without someone to call my own And I have found this lesson to be true That the right thing's the hardest thing to do Okay, so great sound. I mean, I'm happy with that sound. Moving on to this vocal trick, I, I wanna experiment with this, and I decided to have Justin sing between the two capsules, have them both face him as the vocalist, and have one capsule as Omni, and have the capsule below it as figure eight. And as long as we're equidistant to both capsules, we might actually be able to mix and match the sounds of both. Therefore, we're actually EQing his voice using a mix of the capsules. First up, I'll play you just the top capsule in Omni, then the bottom capsule in Figure 8, and then I'm gonna make a mix of both. I'll have a vocal sound that's a little bit more on the Omni side, and then I'll have a vocal sound that's a little bit louder for the Figure 8 side. Well, I pack up and leave this town tonight. Then maybe I'll stand a chance to win this fight. The fight I have to win inside my head. As I lie awake at night in my bed These nights are getting easier to sleep alone Without someone to call my own And I have found this lesson to be true That the right thing's the hardest thing to do this is just scratching the surface with this. Um, not only is this kind of producing a cardioid-like sound, but we're able to customize the low-end uh, proximity effect 
by mixing and matching the volumes of these two capsules. Really cool. And on top of this, I can imagine, you know, setting one preamp to be overdriven, one preamp to be clean. Um, you could have uh, both the same preamp, but you have slightly different position of the mic. One maybe more nasally, one maybe more throaty, I, I don't know. But there's just so many different options you could do by having two capsules that are the same and so close together in one mic. Just a ton of cool options that you can do. So kind of as a bonus, I wanted to do this and I haven't had a mic that would really do this well. And because there's two capsules that are so close together, I wanted to do a stereo microphone underneath the ride cymbal. Uh, we've talked about this before in the show about the dick mic or the, the worst, worst mic or the fat mic. Uh, this is something that Sylvia Massey has talked about. And Derek over at Vanguard, he's like, dude, you gotta try that. You know, it's such a great idea, you gotta try it. So here it is, it is a stereo dick mic with two microphones underneath the ride cymbal, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, okay? Here it is. I'm so used to hearing this position as just a mono mic and you just kind of mix it in, compress it a lot, mix it in and kind of thicken things up. But I thought this was really cool. Uh, I've never heard anything do it and this was, this just blew my mind. So I'd love to know any ideas you have for me on what I should try next. If you have any questions about these microphones, you can check them out at vanguardaudiolabs.com.